So, um, hello everybody. So, I'm uh, Baptiste Jonglet, and I work for INRIA, which is a public research institute in France. And uh, here are my colleagues, Geo and Marie, who also work for INRIA in our research team. Uh, so, we are part of a um, team that is called Stack, and we do research on edge computing in general, including OpenStack and other, other projects. Uh, so, we're going to present uh, our project Kiops. Um, which is which is a, um, a proposal for um, to um, to make application work on edge infrastructure. So just a warning: this is a research; it's a prototype. Uh, don't expect a complete solution that uh, you can deploy. We are not uh, we are not being a product or whatever. <coughs> so a bit of context. So you all know that uh, the edge is taking off. This infrastructure is being deployed and so on. Um, but existing applications, they, are, they may not run that well on this kind of infrastructure. Um, because in, in um, highly geo-distributed infrastructure, you have high latency between the different components. So applications may not expect that. And you can have disconnection because the network may not be reliable. So these are new problems because you mostly don't have this kind of problem in a data center. So that's a new challenge for applications to overcome these, uh, these, new, these new challenges. Yeah. So you could modify the applications uh, so that they would run on such a new infrastructure, but it's quite, uh, I mean, it's specific to each application and it's quite uh, intrusive. So the approach we want to, um, the approach we take is to try to be generic and not mm, require modification of the application. So just take the application and do something, and then it will hopefully run in an edge environment. So to define the problem a bit more um, in details, uh, let's take an example. So we are um, looking at um, service-based, uh, microservice-based applications. So just to illustrate, we take OpenStack, but you could also do this for Kubernetes or Shadatech or whatever microservice application. So here we have Nova um, that will talk to Glance because a user wants to boot a VM and you have to fetch the, the image from Glance. Um, and we have two users which are very far away from each other, so this is not very good for locality. So of course you have an edge infrastructure, so you will just um, replicate the service, okay? You put two instances of the same service on two different sites, and uh, I mean, as a basic idea, this works. Uh, each user will use a local service, so you have low latency. Um, it's robust to network partitioning. You can have uh, network cottages. Each instance is independent. So this is the basic idea, but. Of course, uh, in some cases, you want to collaborate between, um, between several instances of the service. So in this example, um, again, it's very simple. The user on the right may want to access an image that is stored on the left. So inside uh, the microservices, you would have communication between the different instances. Okay? So this is one example of collaboration and um, Marie and Joe will go into more details into what we mean by collaboration. So of course, uh, there has been some work being done on this, uh, this kind of architecture uh, to be able to collaborate. So this is just an overview. Uh, so on the left, you have an approach that involves service-to-service uh, -service collaboration. So an example in the OpenStack world would be uh, Keystone-to-Keystone. But this requires specific code in each service, so this is what we want to avoid. Then you could have broker-based uh, collaboration. So in this case, you have brokers that intermediate between the different services. But again, the, the broker needs to be um, specific to each service that you want to, to connect to each other. Um, and then finally, this is something that we presented at uh, a previous OpenStack Summit. You could uh, collaborate through the database. So you could either um, use a distributed database or just replicate a uh, database. 
So this, this is good because you don't have to change the application. It's completely transparent. But um, actually, there are issues because uh, what makes sense in one context, for instance, on the left, if you have a, create a resource, it may, met, it may not make any sense on the right. And you could have conflicts, like two resources that have the same name, but they mean something different in the two sites. Like if you talk about uh, an image, a file, or whatever, it's, it may not be consistent between the two sites. So we want to show a, a new approach to solve uh, this problem. And uh, the principles, um, as I said, is that the, um, you, it's what we call local first. So we really want auto instances to be as autonomous as possible, to really to ensure robustness. But then, on demand, you can, uh, you, could have, you can add collaboration between the services. So it should be generic, it should work with, an, hopefully, any application. And don't, uh, don't touch the code, just keep it as it is. So, I will leave the floor to Marie. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, the, as with the principle that Baptiste showed you, uh, we can. So, this is basically the same side as before, but we abstracted uh, the services because we want the approach to be generic and so work uh, with any kind of services. So, we can imagine that service A would be Nova and service B would be Glance. And it was just it works just as before. It's really the same, instantiated everywhere. And uh, the user will use the, the, the closest site. And this, this uh, particular disposition uh, ensures the local first principle that Baptiste told you about, uh, which um, is to always be able to serve local requests at, at the minimum. Uh, because if there is a partition between the two sites, you really need the request to be uh, able to, to, to to be done, <laughs> executed. And this also uh, allows to minimize the communication between DC, because you will only talk to your local data center. Uh, you have a, an example of a request, uh, so like OpenStack uh, server create, but here it will be ser uh, service A, and with a, a sub resource from another site. So, Baptiste also told you that uh, in order to, to leverage the full infrastructure, we will probably have to do collaboration between sites. Uh, so, we don't have to have all the resources on every site. Um, so, for example, the first one we envisioned was sharing, um, which is a collaboration where a sub resource is located on another site, and you will just get it from this other site. The second uh, uh, collaboration is replication, where the user will create replicas of the same resource on different sites. And the third one is cross, in which a resource uh, spans across different involved sites where you want, to, where you want your resource to be. Um, so, as I said, sharing is uh, when you have a resource that is on another site and he is using site one. And uh, yeah, they will need to get a, a resource from site two. So how do how do they do that? Is with uh, this kind of request, where you can specify a scope of the request and specify which service will actually execute this request. Here, service A will be on site one, and service B will be on site two. So this provides flexibility uh, for your resources because you don't have to have all the resources on all your site. You can have some on one and some on the other and get them anyway. It's not a problem. So this is the main, uh, the, the main uh, collaborations which help also the other collaboration. Uh, the second one is replication, where you can replicate a resource on several sites with just a, a another request that say on which site you want it. And we'll do with Sorry, I forgot to talk about that. Uh, so, the, on the picture, you can see the full framework uh, abstracted. Kerbs is our service mesh. So, these uh, circles represent the interceptions of every message that comes from that com comes through, and it will get them to Kerbs. And if Kerbs needs to work on something like transfer the, the request to another site, 
it will do that. And it will also store information about the replica so we can find them later. So replication is, well, for replication, you, you have two replicas of your resource, so basically it's for robustness first, but it also helps to lower latency when you access the resource because you will get the closest to you. And it also increases robustness in case of partition, you will still be able to get one of the resource. Uh, the replication, as we intended, uh, follows an eventual consistency for a, every replica, and it is maintained only through the API because we only use the application API. So if you want to do something uh, finer and it's not in the API of the application, you can do it. So Joe will talk to you about Cross. Um, thank you, Mary. So uh, Cross is the third uh, collaboration technique which we are envisioning in our solution. So it creates a illusion of a single service resource across the involved sites. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with a single system image project which happened some years ago. So in that, we'll be connecting to the multiple uh, senders and then we'll be spanning a single OS and applications will be deployed on top of that. So something similar on the networking and the service, uh, so on the service resources uh, is similar to what we are proposing with Cross. So the service or the resource is made available across the geo-distributed sites without creating independent resources at each and every point, each and every site. So this particular instance is made available throughout the particular uh, areas, particular sites, uh, this particular resource. At the same time, the cross will be able to manage the resource availability, the network partition, the local first approach of all the things which we uh, just uh, Baptist uh, told about previously, which we are originally envisioned in the particular solution. And the cross is based primarily based on two different uh, principles, which is basically aggregation and divisibility. So we need to be able to divide the particular resources into multiple sites, such that in later on, these resources will act together and then uh, uh, combine together and give the illusion at each and every involved site that they are from a single pane, like a single site, not in a distributed sites. So for this, the initial proposal was made by Sanmianto and all from the Stack team. And he did some efforts in uh, OpenStack for this particular project, the initial proposal. So now I'll be giving it back to Mary. <laughs> Thanks. So um, as you saw previously uh, uh, about the request, we have a specific domain, uh, domain specific language, uh, DSL, uh, that is irrespective to any platform. Uh, it can work b with both OpenStack Kubernetes. You just specify the scope. Uh, and each expression contains uh, the collaboration operator, so here it will be the comma for sharing, and service information, which service will be used, location information for this service. So as you can see, this is sharing with a comma. You mentioned you want to use uh, service A on site one, service B on site two, and here you just will do a replica on a VM or a, a deployment uh, on uh, Berlin or Paris. And Paris, sorry, it's not the same. Um, and by the way, talking about R, we also envision uh, other types of collaboration that could be needed. So you pretty much seen already sharing. Uh, replication here yeah, as the ampersand, I think it's, uh, so you can say service A will be on this site and this site and this site. And cross, for cross, you have a percentage to, to mention every site that would be involved. And then you say which is the primary site where your primary resource will be. Finally, we have the OR operator, uh, which is a basic OR. Uh, and it's just mentioned that you want your resource to be created on site one, or if it's not available on any other site that you list. And from this operator, we can do the around operator uh, that allows you to specify through, uh, so KERPS sends a bit regularly to each other. And so they know at which latency Latin they are far apart. And so you can specify, I want to use site one, or if it's not available, I want to use a site that is at 
at, at maximum 50, second, uh, 50 milliseconds of latency. So um, the approach was uh, first made, the first prototype we made was during the OpenStack Summit in Berlin, right here in 2018, uh, at the Hackathon. Uh, and so the team uh, managed to make only sharing for OpenStack, it made sharing work. Actually, there has been some modification in the code for that. Uh, but not that much, and it was presented in the summit in Denver also. So if you want, I think the videos are available. Um, and this um, allowed us to pave the way towards Kerb playing and towards uh, everything that was done with Kerbs. Um, and this approach already uses, used HA proxy to intercept every request and Lua code to interpret, intercept the code and interpret the code. Sorry. Um, you want to? Okay. Okay. So um, so far, um, Marie Joe presented the um, basic building blocks, which has a different type of collaboration that you may want to use in your uh, to deploy your application, and it can be specified to this uh, scope long um, uh, this scope long abstraction. Um, but when, um, when trying this uh, on real applications, we notice that uh, it can be a bit more complicated than this because the application, uh, the services and, and the resources especially are not just black box. Uh, you can have some, um, some dependencies, some state and so on. So um, we present ways to deal with this, those dependencies. And thank you, Baptist. So, as uh, Baptist mentioned, a resource is not just a black box. So, our, uh, an application consists of like uh, vast heterogeneous uh, microservices, and these microservices rely on resources such as uh, VM, a pod, service network, blah blah blah, etc. So, all these things, like how will we, it will perform, like how can we uh, have or like. Uh, May, uh, like maintain still the dependencies which are having between two resources, even if we make this particular resource into a geo-distributed scenario. So it involves handling dependencies between the microservices, and since these microservices are distributed, dependencies from multiple platforms need to be handled. So what we are observe, what we have observed is that a generic pattern across multiple frameworks like uh, OpenStack Kubernetes to solve these dependencies. Can it be achievable? Then we have observed primarily three patterns as of now, which uh, are across the platform and the which can take care of the dependencies between two particular resources. The first one is uh, requires. So a requires is a scenario wherein like uh, a VM requires an image to be created. So in this particular scenario, at some particular point of time, especially during the creation, or at some particular point of time, there requires a dependencies which needs to have a certain other resource to be there in order for that resource to work. But it does not require a attachment of this particular two resources at all point of time. The second one is reliance. Where, like, uh, it's this particular resource need to have the relationship between resource A and resource B at all point of time. So, for example, if we need a particular, in case Kubernetes, uh, or Kubernetes uh, uh, pod and a secret relation, so it might require, it must be available all the time. So, in that particular case, uh, if it's broken, it can affect the pod at a particular point of time. So this particular reliance means that it requires uh, strong dependencies at any point of time. Then the third one is a composed relation, which is like kind of a hierarchical um, uh, relationship, wherein like there will be a certain abstract layer on top, which will control the resources which are there down. For example, uh, deployment in uh, Kubernetes, which will create multiple pods for that. And then uh, a stack in an open stack, which will create like other particular resources for it in the, from a single definition. So 
we have observed some behavioral pattern and all those uh, relationships between them. So we'll be explaining it based on replication and cross, and Mary will be explaining the behavioral pattern which are observed for a replication scenario. Yeah, sorry for the slide before. Uh, IP and image uh, were reversed, but I'm pretty sure you noticed already. <laughs> uh, so um, first one is requirements. So for requirements, it's when you need a resource, a sub-resource only for creation or update of A, like an image for a VM. Uh, in this case, we only need to use sharing to create resource uh, replica of A on every site. And so we just use sharing, and if it needs an update, we use sharing again. In case of reliance, where you need the, um, the sub-resource at all time, it means that uh, in case of network partition, the A resource that are on site two or site three will not be available, available anymore. So either the user can replicate also the sub-resource if he wants, that's not a problem, or just we don't do anything and we just keep sharing uh, for the replicas. And in this case, there will be a heartbeat saying to, to tell the user uh, that site one is not available anymore. And so your, the resources A and, and A on site one and site two, uh, sorry, site three, two and three, will not uh, be available any, anymore because they will be uh, affected by the unavailability of B. And so we also need to store uh, information about B uh, in, the, in the information about B. And we need to store the fact that uh, there are resources that relies on it. So uh, uh, we can prevent deletion. Uh, yeah. We can prevent deletion by warning the user, if you delete this, the, this resource will not be available anymore. And in case of composition, there is actually nothing to do with replication. We just replicate the first resource everywhere, and the application will just do whatever it does all the time, but on, uh, on every site locally. So it's pretty simple, actually. So you want to do cross. So uh, in the cross scenario, um, so as we mentioned, only single resource will be present at a particular uh, site, and the others will be able to access it uh, and, and do the, all the things. So in this case, the requirement and reliance will be pretty straightforward, something similar to the uh, replication in this case. And uh, we will be uh, needing to have, based on the location and all, all location, we'll be needing to have a communication between the particular sites. If there is a network partitioning scenario, then the framework needs to handle and like uh, create the resource in the local one and then proceed on it. The second one is the th third one actually is the composition, wherein like we extend the sub resource A into different sites. So in this example, like uh, I have given a symbol one. So resource A is creating B C D. So in this, everything is in the same site. So cross also envisions to distribute these particular resources into other things. So B will be there in site one, C will be there in site two, D will be there in site three, for example. In this particular case, A still needs to manage it because we don't want to destroy the existing structure of the application. A deployment needs to have a communication between the particular pods in case of Kubernetes. So in that case, uh, Particularly, Cross needs to manage that particular scenario and still maintain the complete integrity even in a geo-distributed uh, scenario. So we have done a small POC uh, based on our current, uh, current uh, assumptions and uh, theories and which whatever we have formulated. So the requirements which we required was that a uh, generic uh, resource handling across platforms such as uh, OpenStack, Kubernetes, et cetera. Decentralized and uh, peer-to-peer -peer architecture, wherein like these two can uh, completely peer-to-peer -peer communication, modular and scalable. And at the same time, it should be able to integrate our collaboration methods. 
So as discussed, our primary target platforms are OpenStack and Kubernetes, but like we are envisioning it to be integrate, uh, like expanded to multiple platforms. And then we have surveyed multiple existing architectures, but uh, not a suitable uh, candidate was found for it. So uh, we have created a two layer kind of uh, architecture on it. So like uh, it is, uh, primarily divided into two different sections, the Keops core and the Keops glue, wherein like the core is the management layer responsible for the deployed application, metadata, and every peer-to-peer -peer aspects and all the communication aspects. This particular core is generic to all platforms, Kubernetes, OpenStack, etc. At the same time, the second layer is the Keops glue, which is the intermediate layer responsible for uh, translating the interactions between the core and the respective platforms. So Glue is independent of a particular platform. Uh, sorry, Glue is dependent on a particular platform, and Core is independent of a particular platform. So Glue can be developed for any particular platform, and this particular key ops concept can be extended to that particular platform at any point of time. So in our first uh, architecture, like we came up with a simple uh, solutions for it. We are like just tested out a little bit. So we are using the HA proxy for, the inter, uh, for intercepting the particular resource from any particular uh, CLI. We are currently only using, uh, we are not using any CLI on our own. We are, as Mary mentioned, with the DSL, we are able to use the uh, platform CLI, the native platform CLI, which is available. And it is intercepted by the HA proxy as of now. And then this particular request is sent to the uh, analyzer or translator, this section, module. And this particular module analyzes the key ops request and then breaks it into the particular generic uh, pattern which we want, like the collaboration strategy, the classification, all those things. Those data are sent to the core API, wherein the process actually happens, whatever is required. And this core decides what to do there. So either if we need to communicate to a different site, uh, we will be uh, sending it currently through a RabbitMQ with an AMQP protocol and a P2PR system. And we will be communicating with multiple uh, key ops site based on this. And the particular data will be sent to a document-based data store, ArangoDB. And when a particular uh, Another side receives the particular request. So it is uh, received by the RabbitMQ and Core API processes the request. And then uh, it sends the data to, a Rango, uh, to the database. And then the analyzer translator translates the particular request into the native platform as per the requirement. So we are using the, uh, for OpenStack, OpenStack APIs for Kubernetes, Kubernetes API. So that's why I told like glue is separate for individual it's separate for platforms. It's, in, it's respective to the platform. Then it sends the particular request back to the platform API and processes the data. So this is the current building block. So we have just done like very small POC on it, and uh, it can change in the future. So initial efforts were, as I told, initial efforts were made uh, for the particular POC. Uh, sharing replication, cross-collaboration, feasibility is tested. And recently, we developed, uh, comple uh, completed the initial POC for the uh, replication and cross under Kubernetes. So it is uh, the tier, like the proof is there now. So now we need to work on it. So, what are the takeaways and what is next? So, uh, can we go from cloud to edge without intrusive change in the business logic? That was the primary aim. So, yes. KeyOps demonstrates it, and we are open for collaborations under various levels. So as we mentioned before, like uh, this is at the initial stage. We had some, exp we had some uh, research done, and now we are proceeding it into a practical aspect. And now it's processing. At the same time, we are developing more on the theoretical part as well. And multiple development efforts are scheduled with a focus on framework and the collaboration. So we are planning on some autonomous loop uh, based on the Kubernetes uh, autonomous loops. At the same time, uh, autonomous site optimization, especially for the cross scenario, wherein like 
we can actually optimize based on the particular usage uh, logs or usage statistics from the particular site. Whichever is higher, we can like uh, do that. And then uh, better network partitioning handling, and then more development on the scope lang and the key ops framework. So thank you for your attention. So I hope uh, we were able to give some info on what is our work. So you can contact us at any point of time on this particular list. Uh, and this is our public repo, which we have done. And like we can scan and get the by the QR code and find us there, the particular repo. So that's it. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Many thanks for the presentation. It's really interesting. I'm wondering, so I've seen no, the, the, the thing, and I come from the Kubernetes world, so I have several questions, and maybe you have already heard them in the past. Uh, OK, um, I see the value of, of, of the whole uh, approach of uh, wrapping resources, but it looks like it's for stateless things. No, What happens when you have something that is stateful? Maybe because it's a database, or maybe because it's a badly written application that has state inside because it has an internal cache or whatever that you cannot touch. OK, so primarily for a stateless application, as you mentioned, it is quite a straightforward uh, thing. So our approach is primarily actually focused on a stateful applications. So that's how we actually envision KeyOps, because stateless, as you told, it's pretty straightforward. So each collaboration mechanisms which we are envisioning are we are separately working on it. So uh, Mary is more working on the replication part. I'm working more on the cross part. And like we are identifying how we can handle the particular stateful scenarios on this case. So and this one. For example, uh, for cross, uh, so recently like uh, we are working on a new pattern how we can identi uh, identify if there's, for example, a network partition scenario and how we can uh, handle the consistency and all those things and improve on it. So, KeyOps is primarily designed for a stateful applications and geo-distributing a stateful applications. OK, uh, following the same pattern. Uh, OK, uh, I imagine that this works super fine for uh, kind of like cloud native applications no? that have develop been developing that aspect, which have a REST API, behave in a way that what happens, I mean, my point is, if you already have a cloud native ap application, why use KeyOps then, and not Kubernetes? Good question. So uh, one of the primary aims of KeyOps was that to migrate a, a particular application into a geo-distributed scenario. Now, some providers or some framework actually can do it. It's there. But at the same time, there should be a change in the business logic or some additional code efforts needs to be done. So KeyOps envisions to do it just without as you deploy in a normal local uh, infrastructure, with the same effort which is made by anyone, we'll be able to deploy it in a geo-distributed scenario. With a bit of glue. With a bit of glue, yeah. <laughs> that key ops will handle it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, maybe we can talk about it later. So, so uh, then I, I, I see the whole thing, no? and I make uh, analogies to Kubernetes, and then I look at the, at the glue, no, a Kiops, Kiops glue, and then I think about the resources of Kubernetes, pods and, and so on. And it feels that by using the pods or by using uh, volumes in Kubernetes, I will get what I get with a Kiops glue, for example. And, and all the, is that correct in a sense? So, is, is that a good analogy? Uh, so glue connects to the uh, Kiops uh, API, sorry, Kubernetes API. Kiops glue connects to the Kiops API. It's like just a translation between uh, the core and the particular uh, platform. Because uh, obviously there needs to be, uh, because like OpenStack API is not as same as Kubernetes API. So there needs to be a connecting mechanism between these two. So that is glue. OK. Many thanks. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not about Ceph, so don't be <laughs> um, It seems to me um, that there should be some or more interest in, in that um, on the on the side of telcos. So have you 
had some connection to telcos, asked them to collaborate with you because, I mean, it's, it's the big thing for them, right? And they're looking for, okay, what are we doing there? Are we doing Edge with OpenStack or using Kubernetes or, or together or smaller devices in other ways? So um, they should have much interest in, in the technology, yes. technology like yes. that. Yes. Well, yes. Uh, so, yeah. I, um, I think uh, Orange uh, in France yeah. is interested, and uh, um, David uh, Sarmiento, which was uh, on the cross slide, uh, he was uh, paid by by Orange. Orange. So, ah, okay. so yeah, there is interest, uh, but mainly about with Orange. So they are interested in the this project. Okay. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, if uh, no further questions, uh, thank you. Just oh. just a second, uh, I will put the slides, uh, I think this video is filmed. Uh, I will put the slides on the comment on YouTube if you need uh, to check on anything at further time. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you all. Thanks.